The next morning, the intrepid trio thanked Malik and his clan and bid them a fond farewell with a lot of waving. Clara Sahara earnestly promised Malik that she would do her best to help with the water problem, though she was not at all sure what it was that she could actually do. Encouraged by Roger the Fox, they set off really early so they could cover a good distance and find some shade before the sun rose too high and it got boiling hot again. After an hour or so, when they had finally lost sight of Malik's camp, Roger the Fox broke their comfortable trudging silence. We are still being followed, he reported, twitching his nose to catch the sour scent of their pursuer. He didn't get much sleep, Clara Sahara told her companions. He's sunburned and horribly rumpled and stained. He doesn't even have a hat. He has tied his handkerchief over his head, but it keeps slipping off. He looks very silly. He's still on his phone the whole time, though I can't understand what he's saying. Something about income forecasts and the bottom line. His bottom line is very droopy, and I think his trousers may fall off. Shouldn't we wait and confront him, the writer asked, raising his fist and trying to look like a boxer. But when he mind throwing a punch, he slipped in the sand and fell flat on his bottom. What does the story say, Roger the Fox asked patiently. It says we keep going, Clara Sahara said. I don't remember writing that, the writer said, scrambling to his feet and reading from his computer tablet. Clara Sahara just smiled. I wonder who we'll meet next, she said. Don't be silly, the writer sniffed. Meeting Malik was a chance in a million, maybe ten million, in this vast expanse of sand. Take it from me, we are extremely unlikely to meet another soul out here. Hello, said Daphne, a young dromedary. Although she was just a youth, Daphne had reached her full height of around two metres of the shoulder, and she nearly weighed nearly half a ton. Her long coat was brown, and she had curved neck which was draped, over which was draped a big, bright yellow bath tile with her name written on it in large blue letters, Daphne. You're a camel, the writer said, shocked. You're very rude, Daphne told him. I'm a dromedary. Daphne has one hump, Roger the Fox explained. It's actually a store of fat that she can use when food is short, which it often is in this part of the world. I do wish I could do that. The writer was a gog, frozen like a statue, with his mouth hanging stupidly open, staring at Daphne. He had never seen a real live dromedary before, and certainly not one who was this close and giving him quite a hard look. You'd better write that down, Roger the Fox reminded him, tugging the right to sleeve with his teeth to rouse him about the hump. I, I, the writer blurted, and he began tapping at his keyboard, frantically typing what Clara Sahara would say next. Why do you have a bath towel in the desert, Clara Sahara asked Daphne. Swimming lesson, Daphne told her. Ha ha, the writer began to laugh before looking at his computer tablet. Oh, you're going to the Oasis, Roger the Fox checked with Daphne. They seem to be old friends. <clears throat> Indeed I am, Daphne said, curling her top lip to reveal her large rotten tooth in what for a dromedary passed as a broad smile. Would you like to come along? Yes, please, said Clara Sahara. Would you like a ride? Daphne asked, already kneeling so that Clara Sahara could seat herself behind her hump. Oh, yes, please, Clara Sahara squealed delightedly. Take my yellow towel and sit on that, Daphne said, and so Clara Sahara did. Ahem, the writer said. Could I also? What does the story say, Roger the Fox interrupted impatiently, raising one foxy eyebrow? It says that the rather rude writer chappie can walk, Daphne said, standing up with the beaming Clara Sahara astride her back. Look, the writer said grumpily, I am the writer, and so I am the one who decides what happens next and who says what. How's that working out for you, Roger the Fox asked. I knew you were going to ask me that, the writer said, scrolling down the page on his computer tablet. I did, I really did. Um, off we go, said Daphne, and, <clears throat> and off she paced with Roger the Fox scuttling along, having a lovely fun time weaving out, weaving in and out of the dromedary's long legs. Wait for me, the writer called, having to run to keep up. Of course, he tripped and fell flat on his face in the sand. But Clara Sahara was already there to catch his computer tablet as it spun from his hands. 
Then she picked him up, dusted him off, returned the tablet to him, and she was back sitting on top of the rhythmically swaying Daphne before you could say, Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle, said the writer. My uncle is called Jacob, Clara Sahara told him. We'll try to go a little slower, Roger the Fox said, giving Daphne a foxy wink. By the time they got to the oasis, it was mid-morning, already hot as an oven, and the writer was quite worn out. Luckily, the grove of date palm trees that grew in the oasis provided shade, and the weary travellers sat with their backs against trees, enjoying the feeling of being a little cooler. A stream emerged from a spring flowing out of some rocks to fill a long, narrow waterhole deep enough for a full-grown camel to swim in, as Daphne was already demonstrating. The swimming coach was another dromedary called Mabel. Wearing spectacles on her nose, Mabel was rather strict and had a terribly loud voice. Stroke, 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 Mabel shouted as Daphne made her way across the water hole and back. Swimming wits, Roger the Fox explained, because she's a beginner. I can only swim if I have armbands, Clara Sahara told the writer, and my white costume with the blue dolphins printed on it. Why don't you, the writer began, but Clara Sahara was already in the water wearing her dolphin swimming costume and armbands. Very good, Mabel complimented the small girl on the breaststroke she had learned from her daddy in the swimming pool back home. Clara Sahara was going to say thank you, but it came out as super because she swallowed a mouthful of water just when she was about to speak. It's best not to speak, speak when you're swimming, the writer wrote. When everyone had finished their swim, although actually the writer was only brave enough to roll his beige corduroy trousers up to his knees and paddle, while Roger the Fox didn't like the water at all and turned his long nose up at the very idea, they all sat in the shade of the date palms and ate delicious dates. Mabel had another lesson coaching a red-necked ostrich, so she bid them farewell and went to try to help her obviously not very able pupil. They could hear a voice from the far end of the waterhole. Stroke, stroke, oh dearie me, and then a lot of spluttering and coughing from the tall bird. That's a lot of throat to swallow water, Roger the Fox observed. Daphne, Clara Sahara said, sounding serious. <coughs> if you knew a superhero, what would you ask them to do to help the creatures living in the desert? Rain, Daphne said simply. Good rains every year, or almost. We can cope with the odd drug here, but lately, this waterhole used to be much bigger. My mummy says that when she learned to swim, it was twice as deep. Some years nowadays, it's dried up completely, and there is no water to drink, let alone swim in. Climate change, the writer remembered, nodding his head, caused by humans in richer countries burning lots of fossil fuels. That's what I heard from TV, Daphne said. You have TV, the writer asked, astounded. A dromedary in the Sahara Desert. Mm, TV is a friend of mine, Daphne told the writer. It's short for Taiwo the Vulture. She's a sweetheart. She's a vulture, the writer asked, typing away. He thought he might be a little bit afraid of vultures. An Egyptian vulture, Daphne confirmed. She flies across the desert once a year with her husband, Tommy, on their migration route. TB always stops to say hello and swap stories. Actually, there aren't so many Egyptian vultures migrating anymore. TB says that they've lost a lot of their habitat. Habitat is the environment, the place where they live, Roger the Fox told the writer. Their home. I knew that, the writer fibbed, searching the internet on his tablet just to make sure the fox was, was right. TV says pollution and people, are, people poisoning them is killing her friends and family, Daphne said sadly. More bad things people are doing to life in the desert, Clara Sahara noted, her brow knitted and her face turning red. She looked as if she was about to explode again. Talking of life in the desert, Roger the fox began. I just took the sweaty man in his horrid suit with the baggy bottom, a big bottle of water from the water hole, Clara Sahara said, calming down. I left it in the sand for him to trip over and find. He didn't see me. Do you know, all he had was a small plastic bottle of sparkling mineral water with a dash of lime, and he finished that a long time ago. 
I don't think he's very clever. I didn't see you move, the writer said, amazed. You are fast. I bet your sweaty friend just threw his plastic bottle away in the desert, Daphne said disgustedly. So many tourists do that. He did, but I picked it up and put it in his jacket pocket. I've done it a few times. Now he's given up trying to throw it away. Clara Sahara laughed. He's rather puzzled, though. Very good, said Daphne, smiling a lippy, dromedary smile. Now I must say goodbye and go home or my mummy will be worried. As long as she doesn't get the hump, the writer said, but softly to himself, and he didn't dare write his silly joke down.